Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke. Today we're gonna ask the question, how much exercise is enough exercise to lose weight? Now there's three major things I wanna talk about now, and I wrote them down so I don't forget them. Uh, first one, energy balance. This, this idea of losing weight is that we have energy in our body stored as fat that we're not utilizing, but we don't want the fat. We don't want to hang on to that much energy because it doesn't, you know, please us when we look at ourselves. So this whole idea of recomposing our body is to turn something that is a little less storage minded into a little bit more uh, live in the moment function minded, right? Muscle is a little bit more functional. It does a lot of stuff for us, um, especially in the moment. You know, if I need to move boxes or if I need to climb up eight flights of stairs, whereas Fat serves a purpose, but it's usually this longer term purpose and we, we don't really like the aesthetics of it. So energy balance is this intake of energy versus your output of energy. Intake being uh, how much food am I eating? Outtake, output <laughs> being um, how much exercise am I doing? How much do I weigh? Like how many calories do I burn just breathing and existing? Um, it also has something to do with your hormonal balance because higher thyroid hormone levels means that I'm burning more energy. And so you, you, I, we're all familiar that some people, we, we all know that some people just generally look skinny and some people generally look heavier, and some people generally look like it comes really easy to them, right? And so we say that those, those types of bodies do better at certain things. So the people who are generally better at being skinny are generally higher thyroid hormones, higher stress hormones. They're putting more energy out rather than taking it in. Um, whereas the flip-flop is true for the people who are generally heavier. Um, and the people in the middle have really good hormones. Now, that's the idea of energy balance. So if, if I'm trying to lose weight, I need to output more and I need to intake less. So there's this, uh, I think it was Mad TV did this joke, uh, joke skit that is kind of a joke, but kind of not a joke, where they said, Oh, this is the greatest new weight loss program. Move more and eat less. And that's, it's kind of that simple, but it's not always that simple because sometimes people have uh, other lifestyle factors, other hormonal issues. I think hormonal is probably really the only piece that's left there, but there are different things that impact hormones, right? It's not just, are you doomed with bad genetics? Sometimes, if you don't sleep really well, like if you sleep less than seven hours a night, um, you know, I try to get everyone, every one of my clients to like a minimum of seven hours, especially if they're looking to lose weight. Like that is the way to keep your hormones in check. And if I don't do that, then I start to over secrete these stress hormones and my body says, okay, well, if I'm so stressed out, I'm just gonna hang on to all this energy. And you're gonna feel sluggish throughout the day because your cells don't know how to use the energy, um, but you have tons of it, as you can tell by your body weight going up. Okay, that's energy balance. Now, the second part of this is diet in particular. Now, how much exercise is enough to lose weight? Well, you don't really need any exercise to lose weight. And that is kind of like the dirty little secret. Diet alone can be enough to lose weight. It might not be enough to achieve the like the toned muscular body that you're looking for though, because without weight training, I have no signals to keep my muscle around. If I just you know, if I just decrease my intake, then I can get that negative energy balance. I can burn off some of the fat that I have stored in my body and all is hunky dory. But this leads us into the third point, progressive overload. So the body is, it will build itself up to deal with the stuff that it's familiar with. So if you 
traditionally lift 400 pounds on your deadlift, your body is gonna keep around the muscle and the nervous activity, nervous system activity, sorry. Uh, it makes sense in my head, right? Uh, that allows you to deadlift 400 pounds. If you continuously deadlift 200 pounds, and then you try to deadlift 400 pounds, you might not be able to because 400 pounds is specific to 400 pounds. 200 pounds is specific to 200 pounds. If you push yourself really hard, then pushing yourself really hard at 200 pounds is kind of the same as pushing yourself at 400 pounds. And so you might get some translation there depending on how you know lucky you are, athletic you are, what kind of athletic background you have. But for somebody who didn't play a whole lot of sports when they were growing up, um, you're, you know, you're not going to see tremendous input or, or impact in that heavier types of training with just lower types of training. Um, the principle, though, is progressing the overload that you give your body. So if I... D you know, if I just do mindless arm curls with four pound dumbbells and I never really get sore from it, I never really get that tired while doing it, then I'm not really overloading my body. I'm going to have the fitness to do four pound curls for a long time, but I'm not going to send signals to my muscles or my muscle cells that say, hey, let's keep this around and maybe let's add some more. So that's where resistance training comes in. If I only do cardio, I don't have, you know, I have a little bit of signal to keep a little bit of muscle, but not the types of muscles that, you know, really show themselves that may give you that toned look, for, for example. Um, so I have to look at this from three points of view. One, is my energy balance low enough? Am I intaking less than I'm putting out? Two, is my diet okay? Because I can eat 800 calories really quickly, but I cannot burn 800 calories very quickly. And then three, am I keeping around the muscle to give me that, that you know, kind of incinerator metabolism, keeping my, uh, my muscle around to burn some of these calories, to expend energy more efficiently and more quickly, to support the healthy food that I'm taking in, and to eventually give me the body that I'm looking for, right? So how much exercise is enough to lose weight? Well, progressive overload, if you're doing none right now, then a little bit more than that. And if you're doing a little bit right now, then a little bit more than that. And if you're doing a lot right now, well, you probably don't need any more exercise. You probably need to look at your diet. And if your diet's really good, then you probably need to look at some of that hormonal balance stuff. So are you sleeping really well? If you're not sleeping really well, then you should fix that. You should sleep at least seven hours a night and you should try to find a way to where you're sleeping uninterrupted throughout the, the middle of the night. If it's not that, then maybe you need to see a doctor because there could be something else going on. You could have some medication that is competing with your weight loss goals. Um, and you need to, you know, talk to your doctor about those things. We can't diagnose all of that on YouTube. You need one-on-one -on -one attention, um, public service announcement. <laughs> but that's the principle, right? Progressive overload. Intake a little bit less, output a little bit more, and generally just do things that you're kind of uncomfortable doing. If you can do that, then you will overload your body progressively and you will progress further and further toward your goal.